Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first in a series of four webinars about planning, about execution, about goal setting, and about meeting all your goals. So my name is Nicole Coustier. I'm the founder of Aurelian Coaching and the creator of the DART method for deliberate planning. And this webinar is the first in a series of four that actually teaches you this DART method. Today's session is going to be the shortest of the four because it's pretty straightforward, but it's so critical to what we're trying to accomplish here that I wanted to keep it separate. Now, at, uh, after all of these webinars, there will be a little bit of a homework assignment for you that you can use to kind of practice and implement these tools and these resources immediately so that you can start to see some results. Now, do not be put off by four webinars. These webinars are gonna be short, but the system is so simple. It's so beautifully simple that uh, I want you to practice as we go. All right, so I developed some sides, so I will share my screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, this is us. Okay, so here we go. If you uh, signed up for this webinar, you know that you'll be able to get the replays for all of all four. Okay, so you'll have that, you'll have access to it, you can go back to it at any time, you can share it with other people. I'll also be putting all these webinars on my YouTube channel. So you can go to YouTube, search for Aurelian Coaching, search for my name, you'll find me there. There is all kinds of stuff there. There are shorts, there are tips, there are previous webinars, there is an expertise series that you can, uh, another webinar series like this that a lot, you know, helps you tap into your expertise and increase your self-confidence and all these other things. So there's a lot of information out there for you guys. Where we are starting today is uh, a little bit of history on why I created this system. So I worked corporate for many years. I started out in government work, in government policy, infectious disease, and environment, uh, environmental health for the state of California. And then I moved into consulting and I did a lot of government policy work. And here, here's the thing that is pretty standard across all the teams that I've worked on, is that every team has their own way of doing planning and executing on those plans. And there are lots of systems out there and they are good. They're good systems for just the narrow purpose that they have. But I could not find a more comprehensive system that not just allowed people to put a plan together, but actually ensure that that plan could be executed on and executed on well. And so I took all of this data and experience over time and I started testing um, different methods and different things that I was seeing uh, in the various teams I worked on. And this was not just the teams that I participated in or led. It, they, these were teams that I observed um, with my clients and with other policymakers and things like that. And I would talk to people about, you know, what made the difference? What really made the difference for you putting together a good plan to begin with? But then secondly, ensuring that you executed really well. And what ended up happening was the, over time, I identified four gaps that I saw come up pretty consistently. 
And those four gaps I try to address with the DART method of deliberate planning. And that's why there are four webinars in this series, because I'm going to walk you through each of those. The, the thing that I wanted to share are these four things that have been missing from typical planning tools. Now, your organization, you personally might use lots of different tools. A lot of people use SMART goals, right? That's a really popular one, and it's a good one. Some people use bullet journals. There are so many different options, and they are good for their very, very specific purpose, and they are not as comprehensive as they could be. And so this is what I wanted to share with you today. Here are the four things missing from typical planning tools. First is that a lot of planning starts with goals. Let's set goals. It, there's a lot written on setting goals well. But when people set their goals and they try to execute on those goals, Sometimes they get a little lost during the execution or circumstances change or they don't meet their goals for one reason or another. And what happens is a lot of times people are not anchored in a purpose or a desired condition. This is something upstream from goal setting, whether it's an individual, whether it is a team, or even a, an organization. There needs to be a purpose. And people need to be on the same page about that purpose and about that desired outcome. So there are two aspects to this first step that is typically missing from a lot of other planning tools. So that's number one. Number two is rationale. Why? If you make that decision and if you set that goal, why does that get you closer to fulfilling your purpose? Can you articulate that? A lot of people start creating goals in a vacuum and they just go, 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 go. That goal sounds good. It's a very noble goal. Of course you should pursue that. It's fantastic. But you know what, if you're not tying it, to your purpose or your desired outcome, if that is not crystal clear, you're going to run into some problems. And I see this on teams a lot. And I'll tell a story a little bit later about what I've observed when I've led uh, this exercise, this DART method, in uh, either corporate or nonprofit or volunteer teams. It's a fascinating process to see not just this being implemented for an individual, but for an entire group of people. So number two, what's missing from typical planning tools? Why? Why are you doing it? Okay. Number three, this is probably the biggest one. This is what I call uh, the why nots. It's really the blind spots. And there is not enough in the planning tools that are already out there on what is going to be holding you back from executing well. People do not ask themselves that question enough. And so that has been such a huge piece of feedback for all the people that I talked to. And it was my own observation as well on the teams that I worked on where the teams who were successful in execution looked around the corner. They looked around the corner and they said, well, let's be honest about what is working against us. Let's be honest about ourselves, right? What is gonna prevent us? What is gonna strip our motivation for executing, especially if it's a very, very long-term initiative or a long-term goal. You know, how do you keep things up? So 
the why nots is what I call uh, part three, the, the piece that is typically missing from other planning tools and that is included in the DART method. And then the last one is 100% execution, 100% you know, item number one, item number two, item number three, these are all things that help in the planning stage. Okay. And then there's execution. And typically what happens for a lot of planning tools or strategies is that those things are separate. You have a way to plan and then you have a way to execute. And those are different right? They're separate. Um, and a lot of times it's because people will execute in different ways, right? As long as everybody has the plan, go ahead and execute the way, way you see fit. Here's the issue with that. A lot of people use their calendar to execute, but they don't use it the right way. And it ends up being a meaningless tool. It's lost its meaning. And so one of the things that I've seen in the teams who are really successful in execution is the way they use their calendars. It is a fundamental shift in mindset for how to approach the calendar as a tool to get all your goals met. So these are the four gaps. These are the things that, the four things that the DART method for deliberate planning actually addresses. And so we're gonna start with number one during this webinar series. So let's start at the end. <laughs> we'll start at the end. Before we start setting goals, let's just take a step back and say, where do you wanna end up? Name the purpose of this entire initiative, okay? And for, this is something that is very interesting because I have two responses. I get two responses when I, when I ask this question and they're polar opposites. One is, well, isn't it obvious? Of course it's obvious what we're trying to accomplish here. Is it so obvious? Okay, tell me, tell me it's not obvious to me. And I don't want to make any assumptions, right? If it's obvious to you, fantastic. Go ahead and tell me what the purpose is. Tell me where you want to end up. Tell me what that desired outcome is, what that desired condition is. Not the goal, not the goal you're trying to achieve, but what is that goal? If you achieve it, what does that goal get you? That is the desired condition. That's the purpose that I want people to surface. So that is one reaction that I typically get, which is it's completely obvious. And then the other reaction that I get is I have no idea. I have no idea. Or they feel like it should be clear but when they are put on the spot to actually articulate that desired condition, that purpose, what, what we're doing all of this for, suddenly they're a little tongue tied, right? It's something that, you know, people kind of assume they have in the back of their mind and that it's driving a lot of their decisions and a lot of their behavior, but when they are asked to articulate that purpose and that desired condition, now they can't, okay? So this is why this first step of the DART planning method is so tricky because people can just kind of brush it aside and dismiss it and it shouldn't, let's make sure that you can articulate that well. And when you articulate it, that it's true, that that is the purpose that you want, that that makes sense for you or for your team and that everybody is on the same page about it. So this is a data point from my personal experience. So 84% of the teams that I have worked on 
uh, and this is honestly based on memory. <laughs> so it's not, you know, super scientific here. Okay. But what I want to illustrate with this percentage is how much people are not on the same page about the desired condition and the desired outcome and the purpose for all of this stuff, whatever they might be working on. So I did a rough back of the envelope calculation and I came up with 84%. 84% is the percentage of teams that I've worked on or I've led either when I was on teams working corporate or as a leadership development coach. 84% of the teams that I worked on where everybody on the team could not could not clearly articulate the common purpose or desired outcome of an initiative where they were on the same page. So when I facilitate the DART method in team environments at organizations, this is often the first exercise that I have people do. So I have a number of people in the room. And the first thing that we do is we all take out a little piece of paper, okay? And I ask everybody why we're here. Why are you sitting in this room with a leadership development coach, with an executive performance coach? Why are you guys taking time away from your work to be in this room? Write it down, right? And then I, everybody folds up the piece of paper and we put it in a little basket and I read them out and the answers are wildly different, wildly different, which is so fascinating to me, right? Because I get everything from, I have no idea to a, a very personal purpose to a team focused purpose, to, you know, <laughs> leadership's making me <laughs> purpose, right? It's not clear. People are not on the same page. How can you expect a team to be successful in an initiative where all the individuals in the team do not have the same answer to this question? And what I haven't done, which I also think would be very interesting, is to take the leadership team aside and say, what is your confidence level that all the individuals on this team would have the same answer to this question, right? And I am, you know, it's not one of those things where I expect people to have the, same, the exact same phrasing. If it's, if it's along the same lines, right, if um, if people have the same idea about the purpose, that all counts. That all counts as being on the same page. But 84% of the time, in my experience, that has not been the case. So this is very telling. When people are setting goals, if they don't have a clear understanding and are not on the same page on that purpose, which is upstream of the goals, then there's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong and a lot of opportunity for people to get lost and for motivation to wane. And even if motivation wanes, you know, the purpose, that desired condition that everybody's on the same page about is going to be a rallying cry for people to get back on the motivation train. But if that's confusing, then you lose people, you lose people. Okay, so here's a subtlety about purpose that I want to point out. So this is true for individuals, for teams, for organizations, whatever. When you are defining a purpose, it has everything to do with you and nothing to do with the outsiders and externalities, right? So for example, if an organization has a purpose or a team within an organization has a purpose, it is the purpose of that team and what they are there to do and what they are there to accomplish ultimately, right? 
Um, and same thing for an individual. So um, I had a client, I was doing some, some life coaching for a professional in tech and, you know, uh, she wanted to use very stressful times between COVID and all the remote working changes and, you know, kids being at home doing distance learning. And so this has taken a lot of, uh, put a lot of strain on marriages, right? And so she was, you know, when we were going through this exercise, I was like, what's your purpose? What's your desired condition here? And she said, well, my desired condition is to have a loving and supportive husband. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> you got that wrong. That desired condition has nothing to do with you, right? You have to have a desired condition, which is going to drive your own behavior, not, not somebody else's, right? An organization that has a purpose can't have that purpose anchored in you know, government policy and, you know, externalities. It has to be about what you will do, what you will control, what you will influence, what you will do to get that desired outcome. The, that desired outcome can't be about another party. Do showing up differently, being different. No, it's got to be you. Okay, so that's pro to this. I've seen that sometimes with people who are doing these desired outcomes for the first time. Okay, so what about some examples? Okay, so a lot of people when they finally sit down and they start doing this purpose driven exercise, uh, they get confused between purpose and goals because they're so used to goals. We are so conditioned on goals. And so I wanted to provide a contrast between goals and purpose or desired outcomes, desired conditions. Um, so the stuff on the left is what you hear for typical goals. You, you wanna lose 50 pounds by your birthday. Okay, well, your purpose is upstream of that. Your purpose is to be fit and healthy and emotionally strong, right? If, if that is your desired condition, you can get there any number of ways. One way might be to lose 50 pounds, right? That's great. But, you know, if there is something that happens where you can't meet that goal by your birthday, say, or you lose a lot of weight, but it's not exactly the 50 pounds or whatever it is, right? You have that desired condition as an anchor for you to do course corrections if you need to, right? Another example, um, land a new job in January. People always, you know, they're going to set up a plan to get a new job. And when I ask them why they want to get a new job, often they tell me about all the reasons why their current job sucks, you know? And I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not sure that that is the best reason to, you know, to be a driver and a motivator over, over the long term, right? The desired condition. What is your desired condition? And when we talk a little bit more, a lot of times people say, well, I want to, I want to be happy in my job. I want to have high job satisfaction. Okay. Now we're talking, right? Because now the desired condition doesn't have to do with somebody else, right? Now you can set up goals to always try to fulfill that purpose of having high job satisfaction, right? Regardless of who your manager is, regardless of, you know, how demanding your clients are, like all of those externalities, there's going to be variability and there's always going to be something at play, but if you can anchor yourself in a purpose around being happy in your work, okay, now that is a really good anchor to help you with your goal setting in the future. Lead a mission critical, uh, mission critical initiative this year on the job, right? Well, why do you want to do that? Now, this is really interesting because people, there are people who could have the exact same uh, goal, 
right? Everybody wants to lead a mission critical initiative, right? But they may have very different upstream purposes around that. One person may want to always practice leadership, demonstrate leadership. Maybe leadership is a fundamental guiding principle in all aspects of their life, okay? That is a beautiful, some people may have other desired conditions that they're trying to achieve, but it matters. It matters what that purpose is. Okay. Next, negotiate higher salary at your review in October. Why do you want to do that? Right? What is your purpose in doing that? Um, some people may say they want to retire early. Other people may have a different purpose in it. But if your desired purpose is to retire early, just recognize that when you're goal setting, there are lots of different ways to get there, right? Lots of different ways. So if you try to negotiate a higher salary and you don't get it, what does that mean? You can go back to that desired outcome, that purpose, and find another way to get there. Um, gain a certain amount of funding in Series A, you know, for an organization whose purpose, whose vision is a world that's cancer free, right? This is, that's going to be a rallying cry. That's going to be an anchor point for anybody in that organization who is going to be planning initiatives, executing on initiatives, moving forward, um, you know, getting that ball downfield. So these are some examples. Hopefully the distinction between purpose and goals is a little bit more clear. Okay, and by the way, not all of this has to come from leadership. Not all of it, right? A lot of it can come from teams. So the exercise that I mentioned earlier, where I get everybody in the same room and I say, what are we all doing here? What's the purpose, right? What, what are we going to end up with? Where do we want to end up as a result of starting this? That exercise that I lead, team members can do that with themselves. I, you know, got it to the point where my teams were asking themselves those initiatives. Like every time they were in a meeting, they, they said it took 30 seconds, right? Are we on the same page with where we want to end up on this? <laughs> What's the purpose? And it would surface a lot of really good discussion if people were not on the same page, right? So it's a beautiful team building exercise. It can uh, surface, you know, issues or questions or discrepancies in advance that don't turn into really big problems later. Your teams can do this together. It doesn't have to come down from the top. A lot of times it can make sure that leadership communicates often and well what the purpose of everything is, right? But teams can just do it on their own as well. Okay, so here's your homework. I want you to start at the end, okay? So this is not, you can do it in your mind, you can do it on a piece of paper, you can start a Word document, I don't care. But list your initiatives and your goals that you're working on and make sure that you can articulate why you're doing it. What is the ultimate purpose? Where do you want to end up? What is that desired condition, the condition of your work, the condition of your life, the condition of your marriage, the condition of fill in the blank? If you can articulate that, good. Then if anybody else is involved in this, make sure you get on the same page with them, with your team members at work, with your spouse, with your kids, I don't know, any of these things. Okay. If you are doing something, you have goals and there are other people involved and affected, there are other people working with you on this, make sure you're on the same page with them. Okay. So that wraps up our first webinar in this series for planning and execution. Now, the last thing I want to lead you guys, leave you guys with is what the heck does DART stand for? <laughs> what on earth does it stand for? And it, it is an acronym. DART stands for decision. 
A stands for authority. Who's going to do all of this? R stands for rationale. And T stands for timeline. Okay. So that method is going to be the topic of the next webinar, which is next Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. This was just the starting point. Next, we're going to walk you through the actual DART matrix. And then the third in the webinar series is going to go through the why nots. How do you surface everything that's going to thwart you and address those things in advance? And then the last one is going to be about how to use your calendar the right way to make sure that you actually execute on all your goals. Okay, everybody, uh, thank you for joining. Go to aureliancoaching.com for more information and look for the replay of this webinar. All right, guys, have a great day and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.